Hello Otters, how are you today? Otto Kanna here. I am a bit sick at the moment. Um, I've got really sick again in the last week or so, so I'm really sorry that my voice is all coarse and hoarse. So as you might have gathered, I'm not feeling my best and I wanted to make a relaxing video and it's May, which means people are probably starting to book their summer holiday if they haven't booked it already and start thinking about traveling with their art stuff. So to that end, I challenged myself to go to Tiger and see if I can put together a little travel kit for you guys. First thing I saw when I went into Tiger were these placemats. I think they're just supposed to be used on your table. However, this is the exact thing I was taught to store my brushes in when I was doing Japanese calligraphy. What it is, is it's just some bamboo sticks that have been strung together. And you can substitute this for like a sushi roll thing if you can get those mats as well, but anything that's bamboo. And what's great about them is that because they're quite airy, it just lets more airflow through while you're stirring your brushes on your travels. These mats are perfect if you aren't traveling with like travel brushes you want to take full size brushes and you want to take a few of them maybe it's a long trip or maybe you just prefer to take your brushes that you're used to these are fabulous and all you have to do is just roll them up one by one like this and you can store quite a few brushes into this and then maybe just have a rubber band or something to keep it shut. But what's great about this, beside the airiness, is that the brushes don't move. So you know like the brush case, that's just a plastic tube that you put your brushes in? I always really worry about the brushes getting turned upside down and squishing the brush tip. You don't have to worry about it in here. The brushes are secure, they're not going to move as long as you keep it rolled up tightly and held in place. So you can just throw this in to your bag any which way and your brushes will be safe. So with this mat, your brushes are always going to be nice and secure. The brush tips are not going to get damaged or deformed or anything. And it has some room to air so that they're not going to get moldy. Next up is the postcard sized watercolor paper pad from Tiger and this was two pounds each which works out to be about two dollars seventy cents US. That's really interesting it's actually a gummed pad so all four sides are gummed like you can get with archers and that basically means that you can just take this you don't have to take a board or anything or tape it down anywhere you can paint on this and it should stay relatively flat and let it dry that way. And once you're finished painting and your piece is dry, you this corner, this little bit of corner isn't gummed. So you can just get your nail in and just remove the top layer. On the back it says it is a 20 sheets of 30, I assume GSM watercolor paper. And I think postcard sized papers are great because then if you wanted to, you could paint what you're seeing on your travels and then send the postcard to your friend. Let's have a go at peeling one. Yep, yeah, let's, let's try the quality of the paper. I'm using Escoda Ultimo size 10. So the paints have dried on my little test swatches. And this was Quinacridon Rose, Aurelian, Ultramarine Blue, and the Moon Glow. And you can see that with the granulating one, the texture really comes through. Now, it looks more like a mechanical texture. It's very even in its pattering. It looks like you just pressed lots of holes on the paper. But for a £2 pad of paper of 20 sheets it's not too bad the most important thing when you're traveling with your artwork is of course your palette and i 
saw these mint tins right at the end by the tail and I thought these would make perfect palettes for about six pounds because I've seen lots of other YouTubers make a six color palette out of these. These mints are all one pound each. So I grabbed these and these are what I'm going to be turning into palettes in this video. Another option I found, which was just so cute, I had to give it a go, was this heart tin, which also has some mint in it. And it won't be the most space efficient of tins as palette arrangement, but it is so cute. And that would just brighten up my day if I saw it in my rucksack. And this was £2, which is about $2.70 US. So a little bit more than the little mint tins, but you can also put more paints in here. Next up is a slightly thinking outside the box option. I spotted these pickup sticks game for £1, which is $1.40 US. And I thought the box was a great option for a palette. It's very light because it's made out of wood and it's just basically a game but we won't go into the games themselves. We'll just empty it. So this is a nice box. Oh, we still have a stick left. And, and as you can see, you can fit nine full pans of watercolors in, which basically means you can also fit 18 half pans and carry 18 colors in a relatively small space there is a little gap here but you could put like your kneaded eraser in there or a small piece of your normal eraser just cut to fit that size and then everything will be nice and snug and there's something really nice about having wooden palettes for me for some reason if you want some mixing space with your palette you could actually paint this lid either on the other side or the top or the both with some white enamel paints and then you will have cute little mixing areas for you. But I think this is a nice way to carry a lot of paint without it taking up too much space in your rucksack. I think it's really space efficient. So that's all the goodies I bought from Tiger. We have the paper, a really good brush carrier and lots and lots of palette options. Next up, I want to show you how I'm going to convert these mint tins into a six half pound palette for you. For this palette, I decided to go with the Daniel Smith Essential Color Set. What it is, is six tubes of watercolor and it's what we call split complementary. And what it basically means is that you get two yellows, one cool, one warm, two magentas, one warm, one cool, and two blues, one warm, one cool. And with just these six tubes of watercolors, you can mix a huge, huge, wide range of really vibrant watercolors. So if you're down to six colors, I would always recommend a split complementary palette because then you can make any color you want in as beautiful way as possible. Now I do have four Daniel Smith colors that are in the set, which are Hansa Yellow Light, New Gamboge, Pyro Scarlet, Quinacridone Rose, but then I didn't have the two blue shades. They use a Thalo Blue Green shade for theirs. I didn't have it, so I am substituting with Holbein's Thalo Blue Yellow shade which is basically your warm blue. And they use a French ultramarine for their kit and I didn't have that. So I am substituting that with the Holbein Ultramarine Deep, which is going to be your cool blue. Now, like an idiot, I totally forgot that I am actually allergic to mint. So as soon as I opened these tins, I realized I needed to wear a mask. And this is why you're getting a voiceover instead of me talking to you live as I do things. But basically what I did was remove the inner lid, which you can just do quite easily by sticking your finger in the hole of the inner lid and just pulling it up quite firmly and then just emptying the tin. Whew, so the mints that come in this are extra strong. As it says on the tin that I didn't read, 
So if you are allergic to mint like me in any way, then I don't recommend going for this option. I There are plenty of places that sell these kind of tins quite cheaply and empty, never been touched by mint. So I would recommend you go there instead rather than expose yourself to something you're allergic to. Also, once I've finished making this into a palette, I will be giving this away at the end of the video. Please don't apply if you are allergic to mint because despite washing and cleaning these, they still smell quite strong of mint. I don't want people to win this and then have an allergic reaction, so just a warning to you. So that's the tins done and next up I am going to prep these pans to go into the metal tins. First of all, just note down the names of the paint colours. So if you want to take them out and move them about, you don't lose track of what colour it is. The second thing I'm going to do to this is to stick some magnets onto the other side of this so that when it's in the tin, it's nice and secure. That's all the pans labelled. Now for the magnet, I am using these magnetic squares that are from 3M. Whenever I need a self-adhesive magnet, I usually go for 3M because they're really good magnets and they come in these blocks, but I found that they are slightly too big for a half pan. So all I've done is cut them in half, which you can do really easily with a pair of scissors. And then I'm going to just peel them, stick them onto here and then pop it in the pan. The great thing about these magnets, and I will show you in a bit, is that when they're in the tin, it's strong enough to hold the pans really secure. You can shake them about and they won't budge, but they are also weak enough so that if you want to rearrange things or pick up the pans, then you can do that really easily. Just to show you how secure these magnets are, you see how easy it is to remove them and slide them about, but no budge. No budge at all. So they are perfect strengths for the job and I will leave a link down below in the description of where I got this magnet from. And the tins are as easy as that to make. The magnets went on really easily and really quickly and they are ready to be filled. For filling the pan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cool primary colours on top and the warm primary colours on the bottom. So the top left will be Hansa Yellow Light. The bottom left will be New Gamboge. Middle top is going to be Kunakadon Rose. Middle bottom is Pyro Scarlet. And then the rightmost top is going to be Ultramarine Blue. And the rightmost bottom is the Thalo Blue Yellow shade. I just wanted to do a quick colour chart for you to show you how wide a range of colours you can get from just these six colours. Now, of course, this isn't an exhaustive chart of all the colours you can get. Technically speaking, you can make any colours you want from just three colours. However, having six allows you to make brighter, cleaner colours or the more muted, neutralised tones, depending on what you are looking for in a lot easier way. It's a great way to have a reference without it taking up too much space. This is on the postcard pad. And I noticed that the inside cover is also like a watercolory texture. So you could quite easily create this on the inside lid and have this chart without using up any of the paper and you can carry that with you so that you can have a quick reference of this colour chart. I think all of these colours are very pretty and again you can see the texture of the paper but I don't think it's an annoying level of texture. It's just some texture happening. Now onto the giveaway I am going to be giving two sets of my little travel kits that I put together for you. You will get a placemat that is ideal for holding your brushes a pad of watercolour postcard papers and the handmade £6 artist quality palette 
that I've been demonstrating in this video. All you need to add to this set is some brushes, maybe pencils, and some water and then you can just go paint anywhere you like. To win all you have to do is like this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed and then comment down below and then let me know if you could go anywhere in the world and take this set and paint what you see, where would you love to go and take this set to? If you'd like a second chance in winning this set then you can also leave a separate comment down below telling me your favorite place that you have actually painted in and why you loved about that place. This giveaway will close in two weeks time, which basically is the 17th of May, 2018. How are we in May already? I don't know. I will pick two lucky winners at random and announce it on a video in that week. So good luck to you guys in entering this giveaway. Again, I am really sorry about being ill while I record this video, but I wanted to get something fun out there for you guys to watch. I'm sorry for my coarse voice and also I'm sure this video isn't as maybe clearly laid out as it normally is. It's been quite a foggy process. I've <laughs> spilled lots of things on the floor and I've made a mess, but it's actually been fantastic fun putting these palettes for you because who doesn't love putting palettes together? If this video was interesting to you, then please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, then please do so by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you actually get notified when there is a new video. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.